Do you regard black magic as being purely fictitious, or is there some truth in it? Some truth? 100% truth. There is nothing fictitious about black magic, in any way whatever. It is a fact. It is a fact uh, which has existed for several thousand years. I mean, when we talk about black magic, we are talking about Satanism, necromancy, alchemy, witchcraft, the worship of uh, Satan. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and the second instalment of my new series. Today we're going to be looking at the video VAN, or Violence Against Nature, by Bad Omens and Poppy. Now Poppy is a YouTuber that went viral quite some time ago due to her deeply unsettling videos which appear to conceal hidden messages and have an incredibly ominous and sinister undertone. One might go as far as to say that these videos she posted were actually an integral part of her programming which was unfolding in front of our eyes and actually being documented. Now this may seem a little over the top but it's the only way to capture the symbolism peppered through all of these videos. Because when one pieces together the narrative of these seemingly absurd and just nonsensical videos you come to the inevitable conclusion that Poppy is an MK slave. Now what drives this point home even further that this was the actual documenting of her programming is if you go back and look at the fourth video that was ever posted on her channel it's titled He Loves Me Not Here is a quote from Fritz Springmeier's The Illuminati Formula uh, used to create an undetectable mind control slave uh, this is the section on Dr. Joseph Mengele, who I've spoke about a lot on this channel before. Generally, front stories cover almost everything in a system. Dominoes have been used in Monarch programming as the basis of what is called a motherboard in actual computers. Telephone tones key in on a slave's computer matrix. At times, telephone tones in everyday life will make slaves accidentally wacky. All computers run off a base 2, which uses the numbers 0 and 1. Obviously, binary, we've spoke about this before. 0 and 1 can be represented as on and off. Now, in the programming, they were represented by he loves me and he loves me not. The programmers, especially Dr. Mengele, enjoyed taking a daisy and pulling its petals off one at a time. First petal, I love you. Second petal, I love you not. If the last daisy petal was, I love you not, then the child was dramatically killed in front of other children to be programmed. The Illuminati's method of death, skinning alive, has been developed into a fine art for both programming and ceremonies. A drawing of this can be seen on page 338. So the third video she posts is her holding a telephone with a leopard print jacket on and we all know that leopard print is symbolism for sex kitten and we'll get in that later beta programming so her third video features the phone her fourth video is he loves me not and then the video straight after that her fifth video is i'm poppy following this logic of what fritz is talking about he loves me not would mean that Mengele would have killed her according to his game, right? Because if he pulls the last petal off the daisy and it's he loves me not, unfortunately, that child is then viciously killed as part of the program. I find it interesting that after he loves me not, we have I'm Poppy, almost a reintroduction after she's been killed as a clone or whatever. But this seems to be too coincidental for my liking and if i was going to hazard a guess at the point in time in which she was killed and cloned i would say it was after this fourth video and the evidence suggests that that would be correct uh, with this screenshot here poppy reads the bible at this point in her career it was people were unsure um whether poppy was an actual slave or was sort of playing the role uh, it was up for debate. I mean, me personally, I know that these characters don't play the role of slaves and if they appear to be um, exhibiting conditions that they're under monarch, then they are. Um, 
But at this time, like I said, there was a huge debate going on about what was really going on, if she was just doing it for views or if she was actually being programmed. However, beyond the imagery, uh, there is something just off about some of these videos and they hint at actual abuse suffered by Poppy. Indeed, in some videos, Poppy appears to be bruised or completely traumatised, while in other, she's being subjected to what seems like mild forms of torture, like reading the Bible for 50 minutes straight without stopping, like this video here. You know, I've not watched all 49 minutes of this video. I don't think anybody should, but the bits that I have seen, it's deeply disturbing. Very deeply disturbing. There is something very unsettling about this video. And Vigilant Citizen's quote about this, um, this video actually sums it up best. There is nothing religious about Poppy's Bible reading, as she struggles to read through the Bible's uncommon words, names and phrasings in her robotic voice, the process becomes an exercise in absurdity. As the minutes pass by and Poppy gets tired of reading, one feels a bizarre element of voyeurism going on, uh, as if one's watching a mild snuff film where the reading of the Bible for a long period of time is the torture of choice. Brilliant quote by a vigilant citizen. Absolutely summed it up perfectly. Couldn't have put it better myself. And there are lots of different videos which follow this just strange, unsettling vibe. And there is also one more thing we need to discuss before we move on to actually dis decode this music video. Uh, we need to talk about a person called Mars Argo. Now, in 2009, four years before Poppy appears on the internet, there was an artist called Mars Argo. And just like Poppy, she made these completely bizarre videos in order to promote her music. Her series of videos was called The Computer Show. And from this screenshot here, I think it's pretty clear what's going on. Check the bunny ears. Now, the videos of Mars, Argo and Poppy are literally exactly the same. They have the same voice, the same style and the same deeply unsettling themes. And as you can see here, Poppy has been seen doing very, very similar things to this Mars, Argo character. And Poppy even references one of Mars, Argo's videos in her own. Uh, and I shit you not, I couldn't make this up if I tried, but in the video we see Poppy... Looking at her watch and it reads 3.35, as soon as it hits the 36 minute in the video, it flashes to one of Mars Argo's videos, which was called 3.36. Now I'm sure many of you already know why this is weird, um, so I'm not going to explain the ins and outs of it, of course. If you've seen my 93 reptilians and child abuse video, you'll know why 36.93 is so important, because it always seems to be tied to some form of abuse, okay? And this is exactly what we're seeing here in both of these girls' videos. They are, without a shadow of a doubt, under uh, ritual, ritual abuse. And that 336 on the watch and the 336 in Mars Argo's video is a head nod to that. Now, just like Poppy, Mars Argo gained a cult following off these bizarre videos. Her career went on for about five years and she released multiple songs. It seemed like her career was on a steady, positive trajectory. Now, one day out of the blue, these videos just stopped. The last video that was posted on her channel is called Day of Retribution. And in it, she's reading the transcript of a mass killer's suicide note. Along with the video stopping, Mars Argo also completely vanished from all her social media. And sometime after that, all of her videos were deleted from her YouTube channel, except for three of them. Now, at almost exactly the same time as Mars Argo vanished, Poppy appeared. And that's why this is just so odd. It seemed like as soon as Mars Argo was gone, a carbon copy clone of her style instantaneously appeared and we have Poppy. I'm saying all of this as if I don't know what happened, but of course I do. And that's why I'm making this video today. Now, the reason why these two individuals are carbon copy clones of one another ties directly to this man here, Titan Sinclair. Now, if you look at any description of any music video by Mars Argo or Poppy, you will see this man's name. He is credited as the director. So, at face value, the troves of fans that were obsessing over these seemingly bizarre similarities between Mars Argo and Poppy had found their answer. 
if all of these videos by Mars Argo and Poppy are directed by the same man, of course they would have a similar style. And this would also explain why some of Poppy's videos would sometimes reference Mars Argo, okay? So it all apparently tied back to Titan Sinclair. And Titan Sinclair and Mars Argo were actually in a relationship during the time that she was making this weird-ass computer show. Hence why he sometimes appeared in these videos. And apparently these videos only stopped because their relationship ended. So at the end of the day, all of this seemed like pretty sound reasoning and a valid explanation as to why Mars Argo and Poppy were so similar. It also explained what happened to Mars Argo, where she went, and why Poppy popped up at that time with such a similar style. Because of Titan Sinclair, must be his style. Problem solved, right? No, problem is not solved. Wrong. Right, so what do we know from images like this? And this. And this. We know that both of these girls are under beta programming. They are sex kittens. If you don't know what beta programming is, please go to my video description right now and watch the video that I have linked. Because I have explained beta programming in tremendous depth. And it's something that I just don't have the time to do again in this video. So, bunny ears, leopard print, bird cages, platinum bond hair, blood dripping from the mouth to insinuate cannibalism. These are all telltale signs of programming. And like I've just said, we've been over all of this before. So please go and watch my previous video on the various different types of mind control. Due to the fact that the vast majority of Mars Argo's content was removed, there's not a lot of content to examine. But the stuff that is available honestly speaks volumes. Poppy, on the other hand, is only getting more and more famous by the day. Literally by the day. And today we will be decoding one of her videos. And just to give you a taste of the kind of imagery that's all over Poppy's YouTube channel now, take a look at this creepy still shot from a short video she uploaded called Captured. Here we see a creepy masked man, most likely her handler, Titan Sinclair, capturing Poppy with her own hair. This is pure mind control symbolism, okay? So we know that Titan Sinclair is the handler for Mars Argo and for Poppy, and this is why they're carbon copy clones of one another because there is a science to mind control, okay? There is a, a modus operandi that they do not stray from and once you identify it, you can spot who's under mind control. It doesn't take any special skills, it takes pattern recognition, okay? And Titan Sinclair was responsible for the programming of these two females, I have absolutely no doubt about it. I'm not going to show you any more pictures from her videos because I plan to deep dive on uh, quite a few of them at some point on the channel. And this picture of the capture just sets the scene nicely for the video that we're looking at today. So that's why I decided to show it. But yeah, uh, Poppy getting captured in her own hair by a masked man in black who is definitely her handler. We also remember here we have the black and white symbolism, okay? That is huge, huge in MK. The black and white represents duality. It represents the fracturing of um, the consciousness and it represents the splitting of a soul. It's binary, okay? And that's what essentially they're doing to these people they are constantly splitting and separating splitting and separating dark light dark light nothing is holistic in mk ultra everything is fractured everything is compartmentalized and this black and white helps reflect that it's what the chessboard's about as well this is why you see black and white flooring black and white checkered flooring fucking in every music video possible i can't even be bothered to bring up all of the times I've showed you black and white checks on the floor in music videos, films, I'm not going to do it. If you want to go and have a look at it, then Google it. I don't have the time for that right now. It's, I've been over that a million times. Right, now we've got that little preamble out of the way about Titan Sinclair and Mars Argo. Let's get into actually decoding this uh, music video featuring the band Bad Omens. The title VAN, which is an acronym for Violence Against Nature, is a pretty perfect title because that is exactly what we see throughout this video because it is all about corrupting the natural state of humans for nefarious purposes. As we'll soon see, the song contains a spiritual component where violence against nature is also violence against God's creation and any form of ritual abuse, SRA, is violence against human nature. It's a disgusting thing that should be stopped immediately. Now, the music video begins with an enigmatic apple 
that sits in a lab-like setting. In Genesis, Lucifer offers Eve the proverbial apple which leads to original sin. The apple starts to magically levitate while dripping with blood. Now after this scene with the apple, we get a very quick shot on the screen of a syringe extracting blood from Poppy. This shot is coupled with the red apple dripping in blood, which leads me to believe that the apple actually represents adrenochrome. As we all know, adrenochrome is harvested from traumatised captives, so this seems to fit the narrative of her career. Remember Captured. Following this scene, we see Poppy has been locked inside a glass enclosure with some weeds, plants and what looks like dirt in order to simulate nature or some type of artificial biome. We then see the white coat MK handlers walking into the room. Poppy is obviously under the control of these handlers. One of these is actually played by the lead singer of Bad Omen and it's the one that you can't see, it's the one whose face they black out. So one of the white coats in this music video is actually the lead singer of Bad Omens. Now this song obviously collabed with Bad Omens um, and the MK facility is branded with their stylized version of their logo all over the place. So this is the Bad Omens logo and this is the stylized logo that we see on the lab coats of the MK doctors in the music videos. Okay, in other words, the band plays the role of the sadistic handlers. They even own the MK lab. Now, considering the horrific mental, physical and sexual abuse that MK handlers subject to their slaves, this is a rather strange role to play and I don't know why you would opt to do this in a music video. In one of the following scenes, we see that one of the handlers in the white coat is actually Poppy herself, but with black hair. Now, this obviously represents one of Poppy's altars. MK handlers are often MK slaves themselves. Victims become perpetrators and the cycle continues. So this music video is a very apt representation of what happens during the MK treatment. Now, like I said, at the beginning of the video, blood is extracted from Poppy. We now get another shot here of what looks like blood being dropped into a vial in preparation to be mixed. That mixture is placed in another injection, which is then given to Poppy. After we see Poppy being injected, her eyes turn black. Very common, very, very common theme that we see in music videos. Now, most people uh, think scenes like this represent the loss of one's soul and demonic possession. And I'm not saying that there is not an aspect of truth to that. But what I really think the black eyes represent is black goo which i'm assuming is what is being mixed with her blood in this vial and this would again lend credence to the idea of monarch programming because it is the monarch program that shoots up their victims with black goo whereas say kruger for example does not do this then to hammer them now in the coffin a little further and ensure that all the symbol literate folk out there know exactly what this video is talking about there are monarch symbols inserted all, inserted all over this video. Symbols which I've discussed at length on this channel before this music video ever came into existence. These symbols, which are scattered in between the scenes of Poppy being programmed, are of course the monarch butterfly and the white rabbit. In this image here, we see a monarch butterfly trapped in a vial, desperately trying to flap its wings and escape. This is clearly being paralleled with the position that Poppy currently finds herself in. She is the monarch butterfly. And in the scene prior to Poppy being shot up with a black goo, we see this image of the white rabbit flash onto the screen. As explained in numerous of my previous videos and in the first instalment to this series, the theme of Alice in Wonderland always makes an appearance during videos about monarch programming. Why? Well, the symbol of the white rabbit is extremely important in programming. In Alice in Wonderland, which along with a plethora of other movies is used as a thematic base for programming, Alice follows a white rabbit through the looking glass to enter Wonderland. While being programmed, MK slaves are told to follow the white rabbit to Wonderland, which in their case means total disassociation. When this is accomplished, handlers can engage in the ultimate goal of monarch programming, which is the splitting and the fracturing of personalities. 
And what you need to realise is that 70 to 75% of monarch slaves are female. I'm going to say that again. 70 to 75% of monarch slaves are female. This is because females have a much higher pain threshold than men, which means that they disassociate much faster, which means that they can be programmed much faster because they reach these altered states of consciousness much faster. If you want to know more about Alice in Wonderland and the Wizard of Oz and how they're used as a thematic base for programming, then please watch the previous videos on my channel where I go into phenomenal detail about these movies. I must keep the explanation short here for the sake of brevity. Here are a few more highly, highly symbolic shots. Um, in the second one, we see the white rabbit effectively covering Poppy's eye creating that one eye symbolism um, which we all know and we all see all over Hollywood and it should essentially be understood as representing total slavery so you see someone throwing up this one eye symbol they are a complete and total slave simple as that don't care who it is The first part of this video seems to be showing you the process of Poppy getting shot up with a black goo and essentially tortured in a doctor's chair, which I see as the preparation stage for the fracture. The second half of this video appears to show the actual fracture itself, and that's what we're going to have a look at now. Now, as I stated in the first instalment to this series, every MK-themed movie or music video that we see always seems to have the same specific scene inevitably happening. We see glass shattering in the last video. We see Katy Perry do it. Not Katy Perry, sorry, my bad. All of these witches running around in my brain. In the last video, we saw Taylor Swift break the glass at the end of the, of the video in that sort of lab-like, weird, inverted room that she was in. So typically when we see glass smashing, we usually see the MK slave rebelling and attempting to escape programming. And through symbolism, we're told that this is all happening in the slave's head. Again, think back to the Taylor Swift video, it was all happening in her head. Um, and a prime example of this pattern can be found in David Bowie's movie Labyrinth. Uh, if you haven't seen Labyrinth, you should definitely watch that film. You'd get something out of it without a shadow of a doubt. Or watch a decode on Labyrinth. I haven't done one because I've never got around to it. But yeah, Labyrinth was essentially detailing Bowie's programming. But yeah, let's not get onto that now. That is a totally different topic. So yeah, we have this scene, the glass shattering scene in this poppy, this poppy video. So before the, she's in this sort of um, artificially generated biome that I told you guys about earlier that we saw her in. And before we see the glass shattering scene, the handler that is Poppy is outside of the biome looking at her. So she's the only one there. So it's just Poppy there, really. Um, Poppy stares back at Poppy, the black haired handler. The mirror reflection of their faces overlaid clearly indicates that this is one of her altars. That's what this shot here is about. This could even be the specific scene that created her black haired altar. Handler Poppy then breaks the glass with a small hammer, recreating the obligatory fracture of the persona scene depicted in all MK stories. So you see here, black haired Poppy's looking into it, then bang, she hits it with a hammer, and that represents the fracturing. That is the splitting of the personality, that is the splitting of the psyche. Following this glass smashing scene, we then see a disassociated, dazed, and lifeless Poppy singing while surrounded by numerous etheric floating versions of herself. I mean, yeah, this is like as direct as it gets. This scene represents her core personality or her front altar being fractured into multiple different parts and all of those etheric versions of Poppy that we can see around her pulling all those strange faces are all of the other parts that have been fractured off her front altar. Once the glass breaks, the colour of the scene completely changes to black and red. Poppy actually escapes and all hell breaks loose now. In the in the lab I'm talking about. Uh, a SWAT team is sent looking for Poppy. However, she is now in a different altar following her fracture. 
and that Alta is apparently an absolute killing machine as we see her absolutely massacre the army of men sent over to her and again lends more credence to super soldiers and the fact that there are people out there who have alternate personalities that are trained fighters, trained killers. Um, this takes us back to SSP. You know, this this is all this is all very holistic, guys. You're going to see the same themes popping over, popping up over and over again. So in this video, clearly, once she was shot up with black goo and fractured, this altar that she's now in evidently kicks ass because there's a SWAT team sent over to her and she messes them all up. And at this point in the video, most people would be tempted to say, oh, Poppy escaped. She messed up the SWAT team. She broke her programming and turned into a badass. Now she's free from mind control. Unfortunately, this is not the case at all. And this is confirmed in the following scene. After we see the SWAT team holding the flashlight, we see a shot of an MK handler holding a flashlight to Poppy's eyes. The message behind this... Poppy's escape is happening in her head. She is still completely under the control of the handlers and is experiencing her current situation through her altar. Now at the end of this video we see Poppy running towards a huge bright light appearing to escape the facility and break free from her captors. But considering that all of this is happening in her head, as we just saw, it's safe to say that the light which appears to be coming from the escape doors is more than likely this light that's coming from the handler's flashlight. So what this scene is telling us here is that she is essentially running straight back into programming. She is stuck in an internal loop and the video ends on that. She runs out, runs into that huge bright white light and the video ends. I mean, if you ever want to see a video about mind control, guys, whew, this is definitely one. I think when you're looking at this information holistically, when you look at the creepy stuff that she was forced to do as a kid, when you look at the weird way her channel came about, when you look at just the strange, unsettling way she presents herself, images like this from Captured. Guys, this, this poor woman is gone, mate. She is completely and utterly fractured. So I had to look at this video because it is a really, really good example of how these guys use symbolism to occult, occult what they do from the profane, but tell the initiated what they do. Yeah, this is what this is. This is how they operate. Monarch butterflies and white rabbits and glass fracturing. It's the same stuff over and over again. I hope you enjoyed this second part, guys. Um, Next video will be out soon, part three, and we will be looking at uh, another video, and decoding the symbolism in, in another video. Um, any requests also, please send me a message. If there's music videos you want me to look at, uh, you know, tell me, guys, and I'm happy to have a look at them. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And please don't fall for the Hollywood tricks. It's built on a hotbed of abuse.